So we've done a little bit of organization and uh, now we're going to take a look at our setup file that we created. Um, now we're going to have, at some point we're going to add a link to the database and uh, I'm just going to put a little note here with a comment. So we'll be putting the database connection there and we'll probably just put that connection uh, here for now and then uh, we'll, we'll put it in its own file later for security. Um, but uh, So that's going to go there. Uh, let's set up some variables. And uh, for now, just to give an example of variables and how they work, if you're not familiar with PHP, this allows us to set the value of something here and use it later on. Um, and we're going to create a variable that holds the site title and the page name. So to create a variable, you need to use the dollar sign. That tells PHP this is going to be a variable. And we'll just call this site underscore title. And say equals. And then because we're going to use a string or you know a bunch of text, we need to encapsulate this into quotes. And we're going to go ahead and use single quotes. And we'll just call this Adam CMS 2.0. When we're basically copying the uh, page title over here. And because this is a statement, we need to end it with a semicolon. And now, just like that, we're going to do page underscore title equals. And uh, for now, we're just going to call this home page. Now, we're going to make these dynamic, and we're going to we're going to mess with these variables a little bit later. Um, but I'm just kind of giving you an example of how we're going to use variables. So we save this, and because we're linking the setup file at the very top of our document, we can use these variables anywhere we want from here on out on this page. So let's get rid of our title here and start some PHP tags. And we're going to go ahead and echo. Echo is going to be able to take whatever we put in the echo statement and print it out to the screen, or kind of plop it in our code here. So first we want the page title, because the format we're going to do this in is it's going to be the page title, and then we'll do like the, the vertical bar or the pipe character, and then the site title. So echo page underscore title. And then what we could do is close this and then do a space and then a pipe, and then echo again. So this will work. So we'll save this, and make sure you did save your setup file too. So we have these values, and let's go over to our page and refresh. There you go, you see it up here. Home page, pipe, and then the uh, Atom CMS. Now, when I was talking about what we could do, um, this is kind of a longer way to write it. Let's condense this down by using what's called concatenation. So we can kind of push these things together. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of this here. And then after here, after page title, before the semicolon, because we're not done with this statement yet, we're going to use the concatenation symbol, which is the period. So dot, think of this as kind of like a plus. So we're going to add to. And uh, what we're going to do is add a string. And this string is going to contain that pipe character. So we need a set of single quotes here. We need a space, pipe, space. Then after that string, after the closing quote, we need to do another concatenation. So dot, you know, add to this statement, and then we want the site title. Which one neat thing about Aptana, and uh, I think Dreamweaver does this now in the newer versions, is uh, when you create variables, it starts adding that to the autocomplete. So if you notice here, if I get rid of this, I start typing site title, it popped up here. So I can just go ahead and hit enter, and it finishes writing for me. So this is the same as that longer 
little deal we had just a second ago. So we can save this. Go take a look. And the same result. So just makes things a little more efficient. Now let's go ahead and talk about that database connection we were talking about. So like I said, we're going to do that in this file, but uh, later on, if, and especially if you're going to end up putting this out into production or making it you know, accessible to the public, one way to avoid being hacked is to put this document in a folder that uh, isn't as accessible. Uh, but for now, we're going to do this here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable and we're going to store the connection in that variable. And that may not make total sense just yet, but uh, basically we're going to be able to use this variable to connect to the database throughout the page whenever we need to. And to keep things simple, we're just going to call this DBC for database connection. Again, this should be familiar if you've done my other videos. Uh, many times you might see people call this link for link to the database or connection or something like that. But we're going to call it DBC. So we need to do DBC equals and we're going to run the MySQL connect function. Now in the newer versions of PHP, which odds are, especially if you just installed XAMPP like I did, you're going to have the you're going to have a pretty current version of PHP. So in those versions we use the MySQL I set of functions. Now I'll probably end up referring to them as just MySQL. So when I say the MySQL connect function, remember to put that I in there. And I'll show you what I mean. So when I talked about functions earlier when we were doing the include, uh, just a reminder, a function has the function name and then a set of parentheses. Inside of that parentheses are the parameters. And uh, in the case of the include function, we had one parameter, and that was just the path to the file that we're going to use. In this case, we're going to have four parameters. It's going to want to know where to find the database, where the server is. In this case, it's going to be our local server, the username for the database, the password, and then the name of the database we're connecting to. So let's go ahead and start this out. So MySQL I underscore connect. And then our parentheses. And then we need to start putting parameters in here. And these of course are going to be strings. So the first parameter, and uh, Aptana here is helping you out, showing you uh, the parameters you need. We're just going to use the first four. Don't worry about the port and the socket. So for host, if you're using XAMPP, um, or really actually if you're using a remote host, uh, odds are it's going to be the same. It's going to be local host. The only time you change this really is if you're trying to link to a database that's not on your server. So even if you're doing this remote, if this page is being loaded on your server and the database is on your server, then it's going to be localhost. So to put another parameter in here, after that quote, comma, then another set of quotes, and we need the username. Right now I'm just going to put in generic username, just for a reminder, because we haven't set up our database yet. So comma, we need the password, so password, comma, database name. And we'll go ahead and close that. Now we're going to add to that a little bit later to do some uh, error handling in case the connection isn't uh, working. And we'll go ahead and save that. So next we'll go ahead and actually create this database and fill in the blanks here.